Hey guys, it's Multiplier and today we're with DJ Tech Tools and I'm going to show you how we can turn a vocal sample into an instrument that we can play in Ableton Live. And there's a really cool technique involved in this and what I do, I show you an example of its result in a track I've been working on, just so it will give you a flavour of the sort of cool results you can come up with. So let's have a look at the track, it's a German bass track, we'll skip the first four bars and it sounds like this. So the actual vocal sample instrument I'm talking about is this layer here. Pretty cool, right? And the vocal sample that this came from is this one. So it's a vocal sample from a sample pack from, a, I think it's a Prime Loops Dirty South vocal sample pack. And I'll show you what we did. So the first thing we need to do is we need to basically figure out what note that vocal sample is. Now it may not sound like it has a note, but chances are if it has a vowel sound, it will have at least somewhat of an actual note associated with it. So what we need to do is we need to find out that note. And so to find out what that note is, we've got two main techniques. So let's drag it out first of all as an audio clip into its own layer. So let's drag it out into drop files and devices here. We will zoom in so we can have a good look at the sample. And in fact, we'll solo that as well. So we've got this sample here. Let's make sure it's not being warped because that will affect the way it sounds. So we'll go down to this bit and we can see it's not being warped, which is good. So it sounds like this, make sure it sounds okay. So to find out what note this is, we've got two techniques. And one's really cool and it's always worth trying first of all. And that is if you have Ableton Live 9, you can right click it and do convert melody to new MIDI track. And what that will do is it will analyze the actual audio file and try and work out for you exactly what the melody of this sample is. But because it's only really one note, it will probably only have one note, so a one note melody. And then what we can do is we can have a look at the MIDI clip below and we can see it looks like an A3. So we can see here it's one giant A3 note and then it goes down a little bit to G sharp but really all that's doing is it's almost like a pitch bend at the end of the sound even though it's a vocal. So the note of this audio file is A3 and we can actually confirm that in another way that's pretty cool as well. So we need to drag out a spectrum analyzer as an audio effect so we can look at the frequency information of this clip. So we will double click spectrum. We will make it big with this little arrow right here. And then we will change the range to something like from auto. So we'll click auto, change the range from zero to minus 60. So that will fix the limits of the spectrum analyzer so we can really have a look at the peaks. So the thing we're looking out for is the fundamental note or that main dominant low peak of this particular sound. So as we play the file through, yeah, we need to really have a good look at what's happening in the spectrum analyzer. In particular, you can see that this section here this whole, these two peaks here, these are where the fundamental notes will be. And then if you have a closer look as the file plays through, yeah, we can see that the first or the dominant part of that entire sound is this peak here. Yeah, and then it goes to that other note down here. Yeah, so just as remember in that MIDI file, we saw it was an A3 and then it went to G sharp. So if we actually have a look, we can see that this peak here, which it starts at, if we have a look on the left-hand side of the Spectrum Analyzer window, it says 444 hertz or A3. So we can tell that the technique we used earlier worked correctly and found that it was A3. And then it went down to G sharp. Now it does, yes, change the notes for the second half of this vocal sample, but I'm not worried about that too much. It's almost like a pitch bend and it just adds a little bit of something else. The most important thing is the main part of the sound is a particular note and we know what that note is. So now that we know that this is an A3, we can actually delete this audio channel now because we all what we wanted to do is find out the root note of it or the actual fundamental note of it. So we'll get out an Ableton sampler instrument. So we'll just drag out a sampler and then we will, where it says drop sample here, we need to drop that sample that we're going to use. So we'll go over to current project, drag out the actual sample. And then what we need to do now is two things. We need to first of all set the start and the finish points of the sample. So right now, if I press a note, say this one. Yeah. See how it's running through this sample? You see how it has a red line running through? Yeah, we need to change the start point with this little arrow. 
just to nearest to the front. You can get it really, really accurately if you want, but I'm not too worried about that now. And we'll change the end point as well so that it only runs to the end of what we want. Cool stuff. So it's playing through our sample, and this is essentially a keyboard, the Ableton Push, except I can fix it into a particular scale. So as I play it back at different notes, it's playing it back faster or slower, depending on what note we actually press. So the key to this is if we can tell Ableton Sampler that this note, this sample that we're dragging in is A3, then Ableton will know if I was to press a note, say D3 or F5 or whatever other note I choose, it will know how fast or slow to play back that sample to keep it in tune and the right pitch for what we want. So what we need to do to do that is go to this really, really important root key. And this is where we basically tell the sampler what note is the sample we dragged in. It's as simple as that. So we'll click the down arrow a few times, or in fact the up arrow, till we get to A3, A3, and there you go. Now, any note I press on this Ableton Push, which is basically a keyboard, will be the right note. And I happen to have fixed it in major pentatonic A, which is the scale I was using for this track, so. <laughs> All those notes will be in key. Granted for the last bit of that sample, as remember it was A3 and it went down to G sharp, it went down in note. The final bit almost has a pitch bend effect. But that's fine, it just gives it a bit of extra character and I think it sounds pretty cool. So in terms of taking your vocal sample and turning it into an instrument that plays back the right notes, that's all there is to it. After that, it's just the case of basically finding your vocal sample and then doing some processing afterwards. So all I did is I added an instance of isotope alloy to do some saturation or exciting of the higher frequencies. So as I turn it on and then off, so off. So that's something I do a lot of my vocals and a lot of people wonder how I get such a nice sound on my vocals and saturation, particularly using isotope alloy too, is a really, really nice way of doing it. If you just get up the exciter module and choose through some presets, dial it all in, you get some really, really gritty, really nice kind of shiny sounds are really, really cool. And then what I did is I added a reverb. In this case, I'm a big fan of Toroverb, which was made by the guys at D16. It's got really, really cool pre-delay with this preset I chose. So as I play it through, you can see it puts it in a space and it just gives it a really nice bounce to it. So it puts it in a big, quote unquote, epic space. And with that pre-delay, it just gives it a bit of movement. And that's the Crystal K preset in Toroverb. And that's really all there is to it. If you wanna record your own vocal samples, you can. To be honest, I find this a lot better if you actually use a sample that's already been processed a bit. So in the case of the sample we use, this guy here. Dilla, dilla. That's a sample that out of the sample pack has already been compressed and it's not completely clean. I mean, it's pretty clean, but it's got a little bit of edge to it already. If you take a sample like that, that's had a little bit of processing, not too much, and then you start doing your stuff with the sampler and then do more processing, you get some really, really interesting sounds. And yes, you can use really simple sounds. So for example, if you look through my sample pack library, we have things like this. Do you feel the Don't ever change. Don't ever change. Hey, so that would certainly be a nice way of getting a really clean note, but I personally, I like a lot more grit, a lot more character in my sounds. So I find if you choose things like rap vocal, something with a bit of edge and a bit of character to begin with, when you then start tuning it, getting it in your Ableton sampler, transposing it up and down, doing more processing, that's where you get your really, really interesting sound. And that's how with the case of this dollar sample I use, you get a really, really cool attack on the sound. So if we have a look at this again. And then yeah, if you currently don't have any vocal samples to play with, there are tons and tons of free acapellas from remix competitions, or you can download free taster sample packs, even some free sample packs. And you don't need a lot to get going. You really only need, I don't know, a hand, literally a handful of vocal samples. And there'll be enough there to take something, find out the note, do some processing, maybe process it first, bounce it out to audio, then put it in the sampler. Lots of cool things to do, lots of cool ideas. But yeah, I'll leave it to you to Come up with something cool. I've been Multiply. Hope you enjoyed.